All right, today we're going to go over a work a work a work on it Wednesday. Today what we're going to do for that work on it Wednesday is to cut out a clock. Uh, this is similar to what many of you in Wood Tech 2 who have taken Wood Tech 2 have learned how to do. Um, but the one step that we didn't really go over is how to fill that with epoxy. So the first thing we're going to do, I created a small just little Steelers clock. Uh, the first bit that we put in, if you look down here, is going to be a V-carve bit and that is going to cut out the uh, letters and the numbers on the clock and then we're going to have to switch that bit out to an end mill and we will cut out the uh, actual profile of the clock so we're going to start this up what we first did was bring it over to the computer import it into the software that will open up to allow the router to run and we are going to cut out our letters and numbers and we'll show you what that looks like Okay, now that it has cut out the letters and numbers, we want to cut out the stars that go in the middle. And we also want to cut out the actual clock itself and then also the hole where the mechanism will point will push through so that you can um, obviously see the hands on the clock. So we're going to raise that bit up a little bit. We're going to take our two router wrenches, one on top, one on the bottom, and push apart like this. That'll loosen it. Remember, the collet's usually locked twice, so once it goes through, just get your wrench again, give it a little turn. There we go. That'll take out the bit. The new bit that goes in is, um, is the eighth inch end mill, but you have to change the collet out for that. That's a half inch collet. You change the collet, you put that in, tighten it by hand so that it stays in there, and then grab your wrenches and give it its final tighten. So one on the top, one on the bottom, and this time you'll pull towards yourself. Now what we need to do is reset the zero for Z to tell the bit where the top of the material is. So I'm going to get a go to. That's going to push it over to the bottom left hand corner. We're going to bring that down and tell it exactly where the top surface of that um, clock is going to be. 
which is currently right there. We're going to tell it the zero, the Z, which is the up and down motion. And now we are going to open up our file. Now we're going to cut that out. So we're going to hit start on that and it's going to cut out the stars and then the clock itself.
now we'll pick the router up out of the way and so that you don't cut your hand you want to make sure you move that router bit back far enough so that when you undo your clamps you don't slip off them and accidentally run the top of your hand over top that router bit so we'll loosen this we'll loosen this clamp and we'll kind of show you what we have now it's kind of hard to see so that's going to be the reason um, the next step that we're going to do is we're actually going to fill the areas um, full of colored epoxy so then that'll dry and it'll look like almost like a um, like a glass on there so right now what we need to do is we need to separate this clock though and to do that we need to take it to the planer and plane um, the two parts apart from one another so right now this material is roughly um, roughly seven eighths of an inch and we went down three fourths so once we plane it what will happen is the, the clock will actually drop out of there so we are going to let me go like this here there we go and we're going to take it over to the planer and let's get you up like this here so you can see what's going on and what we're going to do is we're going to we have our planer right now it's set to um, seven eighths of an inch so now we're going to turn the dust collector on so that we can actually do this so you may not hear me and then you'll see after we plane this for the third time we send it through the planer three times it will actually um, fall out of there so let me turn the dust collector on Now you want to make sure you have it upside down. You don't want to, you don't want to plane off what you just what you just cut. So you got to make sure you're upside down. Put it through. Turn the hand wheel. Turn the hand wheel one time. Put it through again. That should take us to 13 sixteenths, and this should take us to 3 fourths. This should allow the clock to fall out. If it doesn't, we can take a little bit more. I think we're just about there. If you can see up to the light, you can actually see that it's ready to fall out of there. See the, the line the, for the circle? So we're gonna take another quarter turn on the hand wheel, send it back through, and there we go. So now, as we bring it out, we're, we're just going to separate out of there, and there comes our clock. So now, what we want to do is so that we can see the numbers, because if you hung this on the wall right now, and you were if you were sitting across the room, you wouldn't be able to read the numbers. So the next thing we're going to do is mix up some epoxy. And then we're going to fill these and let it dry overnight, and you'll be able to see the difference. So we'll stop you there and get some epoxy mixed up. All right, next thing we're going to go over here is how to fill this with epoxy. Um, right now, this first star for the Steelers is yellow, then you have a red one, then you have a blue one. We're going to do the yellow and red just to give you a demonstration, and then we'll finish up and do the blue. You can also do the numbers, and you can also do the letters. But we're just going to do the yellow and the red first. So the first thing you want to do is, this is called a bar top finish. It's a super glaze pour on finish. Same thing as the epoxy tables that we showed you, but this is just a little bit different. Just comes two parts. You got your part A, which is your resin, and you got your part B, which is your activator. So the activator, when the two of them go together, allow them to harden. So what you want to do is you want to get equal parts of both. So it's a one-to-one -one mixture. To get one-to-one, -one, what I do is I take about half a cup of the resin, squeeze it in there. Now you wanna to try to mix this enough so that it's gonna fill the, um, it's gonna fill the overall area that you want on one pour because it's hard to get the same color consistency without actually weighing this out. So I'm not weighing it out, I'm just doing a one-to-one -one mixture here, and I'm just gonna go by, by sight on the redness that I want. I want it to be kind of a dark red, I don't want it to be translucent. The more dye you put in, 
This is the dye. This is just tempera paint powder. This is no different than what you paint it with when you were in primary school. Um, so you take your two different, um, you take, oops, you take your two different resins, you pour your, this is your resin here, that goes here, into the cup. Take a little dowel rod, you're going to scrape that out. You want to make sure you get it all. If you don't get a one-to-one -one ratio, it's not going to dry properly. If you have too much resin and not enough hardener, it's going to stay gummy. Um, so there's our resin. Now this is our hardener. So you take your hardener and you put that in there. Now because I'm mixing these together, I can use the two different cups. Now, but when I'm done with this, I want to put this hardener cup back over here next to the hardener and I want to put the resin back over by the resin. If you mix the two up and you start to pour with them, it's not going to give you the same mixture. So you want to make sure that you keep the hardener with the hardener and the resin with the resin. Same thing with the lids. This is the resiner, this is the hardener. I'm sorry, the hardener, that's the resin. You want to keep the caps the same because if not, you're going to glue your caps onto your resin or your hardener, vice versa. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the yellow. Let me make sure I got the steel logo correctly so I don't screw that up. Uh, yeah, so the top star is yellow. So let's move these out of the way so that you can see. Keeping these over here and this over here. Now what you're gonna do is we're gonna dye this stuff yellow. To do that, you don't need a ton of this. So what I do is shake a little bit into the lid. It doesn't take a lot, probably a quarter teaspoon or less. So you're gonna take this and shake it in there. Don't pour it all in, it's just start to stir it. You have a lot of time to work with this, so it's not a race. When you get it to the yellow consistency that you want, that you think, is a good color for the Steelers logo, then you can pour it in. And I just pour it right out of the cup. When I'm doing more fine detail, I'll actually take and put it into, when you were a little kid and you couldn't take uh, cough medicine and things like that correctly, they would put it inside of those syringes without a needle and they'd squirt it in your mouth. Well, that works good for doing the numbers and the letters because it's a little bit more fine detail. But for the actual stars, I have a large area here that I can pour inside of. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go like this and mix it up. And I don't know if you can see that, but it's a pretty good yellow. I'm going to add a wee little bit more to make it a little bit darker. Because I want it to be more of a solid yellow rather than a translucent yellow. So I'm going to add a little bit more yellow, yellow pigment, and it's just tempera paint powder. And stir it up. And you want to make sure you stir it good so that the activator, especially on large pours, so that the activator and the resin have an opportunity um, to come together as, as one, one product so that the two chemicals mix together and harden properly. Once you do that, you're going to go like this here. Okay, now this stuff can get pretty messy, so don't, don't make a big, try not to make a big mess with it. Put some paper down or have a piece of paper that you can lay your lay your mixing stick on. Then all you're gonna do is take this activate or this cup of resin and pour it into this top star. You don't want to overfill it. If anything, you want to try to underfill it. And what you can do then is take your mixing rod that you just mixed it with and just kind of push it into the areas that are lacking it. So um, to get it into the corners, you can just kind of drag it over there a little bit. There we go. So that one's done. Now it does have some bubbles, but we're gonna be able to take care of those. We got time to work with this. This stick now is now garbage. We don't need it anymore. And as you can see, I actually mixed a, probably way too much. So on the next star, being that it's the same size, I'm gonna gauge it with how much too much I made. Now, if I wanted to do something else in yellow, if I wanted to do these numbers, maybe I wanted them yellow, then black, then yellow, then black, you could suck this up inside of a syringe and do a yellow number, a black lump number, just for the black and gold. So there's our yellow. Now we're gonna do the red. Let me just make sure the red is the right star. And it is. So same thing, take your resin, and it's just, you know, we're just doing the same thing, just dyeing it a different color. I'm gonna use a little bit less this time so I don't waste it. This stuff for the two of these um, is about 
it's about $30 for a kit. So you don't want to waste it. And then when you get into doing big projects, like big pours, it can get very expensive. So you want to make sure you do a volume calculator when you go to put these together. So now I'm going to get another, another dowel rod. Don't use the yellow one that you just used. That's garbage because you'll dye it the wrong color. There we go. This is garbage and that's garbage now. And I stir those two together and now I'm going to dye the second one red. Pour a little bit into the cap like we did before so it doesn't shake too much. There we go. And like I said, you're only going to need about a quarter teaspoon or less depending on how much you're dyeing. Okay. And we'll stir that together until it turns to the red that I desire. You're always better off putting less in than more because if you get it too dark, you can't make it lighter. But you can also go and make it darker by just adding more red. This is a nice dark red now, as you can see. So I'm just going to stir it. There we go. And the other thing with oak, when you use an open grain wood, you'll see that this stuff has a tendency to draw into other parts of the material. So another thing that I sometimes like to do, and I didn't do it with this one, but sometimes I like to spray this with lacquer first so it seals the grain so that this stuff doesn't wick into areas um, that I don't want it. I can see the yellow starting to wick in, which means I may have to sand it a little bit. But if you take and lacquer this um, first, it'll seal that grain for you. So now I'm gonna pour my red. side. If you have to, take the dowel rod that you use to stir the red and push it into the areas that need some. So there's your red. The last one would be blue and if I wanted to dye the letters so that they stood out I could do that. I could also paint those letters like we did before when we showed you how to do a, I think we did that one sign for, um, you know, for the penguin sign and things like that that we went over previously this year. But this is how you fill these with epoxy. It's relatively easy. There's not a whole lot to it. When you're all said and done, what you want to do is, and then you can only do this if I'm around, I'm going to take a torch. And this torch will actually pop the bubbles that are in there. So. So that takes care of all your bubbles. I'm not sure if you can see what that did from the camera view, but that took and it popped all the bubbles that were in there. So, so we have this one yellow, this one's red. I can't locate my blue pigment right now where I'd mix this blue up. Um, but once we find that blue pigment, we'll dye this one blue. And then I'm gonna go through later on and I might even do the letters and numbers. But I just wanted you to get an idea from start to finish, how you cut something, fill it full of epoxy, and then go from there. So. That's what we have for you for the work on it Wednesday. If you have any questions, let me know, but that's what we got.